Ultimate Winter Protection Wash. Hi, I'm Ivan. And I'm Nick. And this is DIY Detail. So does that mean we're doing a ceramic coating? I mean, you could do a ceramic coating, but not today. This is a uh, professional grade ceramic coating for the DIYer. We have separate videos about that, in fact, I'm gonna post one right here. Okay. But what we're doing today, we're using ceramic gloss, we're using quick beads. It's going to be super easy and it's gonna take you right up to that level of ultimate protection without that sort of deep dive into a preparation for a professional grade ceramic coating. Excellent. Let's get at it. All right, Ivan, I'm gonna start on the wheels, gonna foam them down with all clean, and you go ahead and tell them what we're doing next. So what's the dilution ratio of your all clean there? 15 to one. Excellent. Or one ounce to 15 ounces of water. And that's coming out of the gallon. Now, if you're using the 16 ounce bottle, you'll just use it straight. But when you buy it in gallons, 15 to one, you get a nice foam and lots of cleaning ability. For the rest of this, well, we're gonna be using incredible suds and a foam cannon. And in our wash bucket, we have three gallons of water. All we need is one ounce of incredible suds. Now I'm gonna do this by eye, but it's basically two capfuls. And that's really all you need. We're gonna use the foam cannon to spray this Jeep down. Get it all covered in nice, incredible suds. Here's my thought process behind that as he's doing it. I get the all clean working for me. It's already breaking down a lot of the gunk. And instead of cleaning these now, let's throw some incredible suds on the entire vehicle, including the wheels, the rim face is gonna continue to emulsify that dirt. Then we're gonna pressure wash everything off. And then I'm gonna use my wheel cleaning bucket and all my brushes. There's some all clean in that bucket as well. I wanna do less work on these wheels, and I'm gonna start with them obviously first, but we're gonna foam and then rinse, and then clean them, and then get to the paint. Exactly. So this is the ultimate protection wash. And here we go with the foam cannon. All right. Now today we've opted for a little watery foam, and the reason we're doing that, some people, contend that it cleans better. So we're gonna give it a try. You think it does or are you just gonna let science do the talking here? Well, both clean very well. Maybe not as fun though, to not have that thick shaving cream foam, but yes, it does clean well. Just while a little is, spritz. Yeah, while Nick is doing the back wheel, I'll start doing the, the wash. And in our wash bucket, we have warm water. Now people ask, do I use warm water, cold water, hot water, ice cubes? It's really what is your preference. The chemical, yes, does clean a little better with warm water, but it's not that big of a difference. But your comfort, that makes a difference. We want this to be fun for y'all. In the summer, I like putting cold water. In the winter, I like putting hot water. Now, anybody who's ever owned a Jeep before knows that these are not the most fun vehicle to wash. Is that just something that you feel or is there a reason behind that? There's a lot of little nooks and crannies and sharp edges and things that make it just not quite as fun. They look simple, but they're actually a very complicated design. How many Jeeps have you owned? I've owned three. So you keep, you're a glutton for punishment, is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. And I've owned three different generations of Jeep. What's your favorite generation of Jeep? I like uh, the, uh, the YJ generation for its looks. Now this generation, we had a, a 2019 like this with the sky roof, that was spectacular. As far as the you know comfort and convenience features and all that fun stuff. But the good old YJ was just a, a nice, fun little vehicle to drive. 
Now you can go ahead and do a formal decontamination here with iron remover if you want. We're not gonna do that today, but what's great about the clay towel, which I just had dunked in the incredible suds bucket, it's phenomenal at bug guts and windshield. So just because I wanna save energy, I'm gonna bust out the clay towel for the windshield because you know, Jeep front windshields are ridiculously prone to bug guts. Yes. That, you know, no, upright, flat stance. Yeah, straight <laughs> up and down. Now I'm saving the, uh, the rock guards here for last because they're always the dirtiest part. A lot of people don't think about cleaning windows, Ivan. No, and it's unfortunate because it's a great way of cleaning windows. And if you have problems with your window towel linting, or what seems to be lint, it's actually not lint. A lot of the times it's actually your little microfibers fracturing or breaking because of contamination on the window. I guess we could clay the car, right? But we're not doing that today? No, we're fine. Let's keep it simple, keep it easy. Yeah. And then finally, the rock, rock guards. So here, we can see that there's no beading whatsoever on this hood. The water is just sitting there. It's absolutely flat. Right. That's where Quick Beads comes in. Watch this. Instant reaction. There we go. Now we have hardly any water left on the surface. So let's get the rest of it done. Now, when you're using quick beads, you wanna make sure you've shaken the bottle a little bit and from there, spray it on the vehicle. Let it sit 30 seconds. You can go up to a minute if you want. If you're in direct sunlight, the fat, you'll need to move a little faster. We're in a controlled environment, so we can take our time. And when you're rinsing it off, you actually wanna rinse from the bottom up of the vehicle. That way you're activating it instead of just rinsing it off. And it's safe on plastics, right? Safe I mean, on plastics. Some people are gonna wonder what can I use this on? Windows, chrome, wheels, you name it. The other thing is if you don't have a pressure washer, works great with a garden hose. Let's get that windshield. There you go, Nick. All right. beading is amazing. Now, at this point, you can just dry the panel. It will be slick to the touch, but Ivan, you're not ready to give up yet, are you? No, we're going for the ultimate in protection without going for a full on ceramic coating. That means ceramic, ceramic gloss. gloss. So we're using ceramic gloss as a drying aid. Quick beads is its own drying aid, but ceramic gloss is gonna add a little more protection. And it smells nice too. That it does. Well, quick bead smells like grapes as well, so they're yeah. both great. Now the ceramic gloss, we're lightly gonna spray it on and dry from there. And you see, as soon as we spray the ceramic gloss on, oh, two towels. <laughs> as soon as we spray the ceramic gloss on, 
the water beads start falling. Like the towel fell off my shoulder. I haven't actually showers with quick beads in the morning, so I'm super slick. Mr. Slick. Who out there, leave a comment below, has a master blaster or likes to dry with a leaf blower? We typically will do that, but I'm gonna knock down this ceramic gloss first. And then as I sort of go around all the nooks and crannies, I'll hit the master blaster up, I'll put a drip catcher towel right under the, uh, under the mirror and some handles. Oh my goodness, this paint is so slick, Ivan. It's almost drying itself. So if you own a Jeep, you probably need like 18 drip catchers. Where are the most notorious drip spots on Jeeps, Ivan? Every one of these hinges, the mirrors obviously, and just everywhere. These seams, etc. But the Jeep has one thing though, that it's not very friendly to the drip catcher. It's mostly aluminum. Now one thing, if you own a Jeep, especially this generation, there's a chance of getting rocks between the fender flare and the fender itself. So you wanna make sure that before you're going to dry that you've washed all of those out of there. The drip catcher has magnets in it, so if you have aluminum substrate, you can just wrap it around and attach the magnet there. It's very cold out today, it's below freezing. So you wanna make sure those door seals are dry when you're, doing the, when you're drying the vehicle. Because you wouldn't wanna leave a door seal that's wet and have it freeze up on you. And if it's nice weather, well, you can just take the doors off the Jeep. So tire shine is visually amazing, especially in winter. It's gonna set your vehicle apart from all the other nasty, muddy ones out there full of snow. Right. But tire shine actually protects the tires and it, I feel like it's resistant to snow. It's gonna help the snow dissipate off the wheels a little, or off the tires a little better, but also protect your tires from the salt. Yeah, salt's a real thing. In it is. In places <laughs> like Utah, where yeah. it snows a lot, and they have to use salt to treat the roads. Exactly. Very important for your tire shine to really stick to the tires and to last. Have a dry tire before you apply it. Have a dry tire, and also make sure you have a clean tire. Your tire shine, if you have a clean tire, like Nick did a great job cleaning these, it's going to last a lot longer. It's a quick little detailer hack. Even on a dirty tire, apply tire shine and it will give your vehicle a little pop. If you got nothing else to do that day, you don't have time, tire shine actually really magnifies the appearance of your vehicle. How do you feel about that, Ivan? Is that sacrilegious to you? A little bit, but nonetheless, it does work. Now, why did you spray on the tire and not just on the brush? Well, it's a bigger tire, you know, the higher profile to me. I just yep. want to give myself a chance of letting it sit in there, letting it dwell a bit, and then I can sort of carefully go around the tire as well. Right. Do you feel like that technique is okay, Ivan? Oh, that's great. Like to go around on the brush, okay. And if you have a low profile tire, well there, you'll want to just spray it on the brush. That way you're not getting it on the wheel. Because Nick got a little bit of overspray on the wheel there, so. I will tell you though, our tire lotion actually makes the rim faces of your black rims pop. So I'm not super worried about that. No. It's not gonna last a long time, that's not what it's meant for. But you just wanna wipe it and blend it in, but actually it looks pretty awesome on black rims if you uh, have a little overspray. Just make sure you're obviously may knocking the, it down a bit. I have the brush, sir. Yeah. Now the tire shine, it's adjustable to the kind of gloss you want. We just put one thin layer on, and once it dries a little bit, it's gonna give you a nice subdued shine. Yeah, I laid mine on a little thick, so I like to let it sit for five minutes, and then finally go back and make sure I've just knocked everything down on the tire to kind of my preferred level of gloss, I guess you could say. Right, and if you want that glazed donut look, if you've got a classic car, and it's appropriate on a classic car to have that shiny tire, because that was the way we did it back then, well, let it sit for five minutes and then put on a second layer. And we're not gonna have any issues with sling? No, not at all. I kinda like the glazed donut look. I know people hate on it and say, I don't want shiny tires, but I don't know. I've talked to people as well about interior detailing and certain people, like I was in an Uber the other day, 
The guy associates a shiny dashboard with clean. with clean. So people, I think, naturally associate as humans, shiny is clean. People like shiny things. So I think we joke about the glazed donut as it's like not a great thing, but I think more people like the glazed donut tire shine look than we give them credit for. Exactly, and it does look good. You know, as it long looks as, clean, right? As long as you don't have the sling that is associated. And a exactly. lot of people associate the glazed donut look with the little dots of sling all down the side of the vehicle. A proper tire lotion like ours doesn't sling. How do you like to protect your car? Have you done the double up, as I just named it, the ceramic gloss quick beads combo? You know what I noticed there? The extra tire lotion that I got on the rim faces, it was so slick and protected with quick beads that it wiped off super easy too. Exactly. So. The more you know. The more you know. With that, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, or ideas, leave them below.